Day 137 notes pre-calculus. Today I'm going to work through several examples from 6.5 and 6.6 where we demonstrate how to solve a triangle using the law of sines and the law of cosines. Now the examples that I show in this video could be enhanced if I had a protractor that I could display on this screen. In fact, if you have a protractor, it would be very helpful to use in order to sketch accurately shaped triangles. Tomorrow in class, when I do the examples on the board, I'll use a protractor there, and you can see exactly uh, what I'm talking about and how, that, how the work might be different with a more precise drawing. But here in number 13, we can still sketch this picture. We're starting with a triangle that has an angle of A and an angle of B and a side length C. So I'm just going to draw a triangle here. I'm going to label angle A in one corner. To be 50 degrees. I'm going to angle or draw angle B to be 60 degrees. So B I'll place down here and call that one 60 degrees. And C then would be 230 units. Now it's important to label that position correctly. Remember angle A is opposite of side length A. Angle B is opposite of side length B, so that means angle C, which would have been up here, is opposite of side length C, which is 230, degree, or 230 units. Now, to me, this looks like an angle side angle measurement. And angle side angle is an example of case number one. So clearly, we are going to use the law of sines. When solving the triangle, we're looking for all three sides and all three angles. So angles A, B, and C, sides A, B, and C. We'll place all of our answers here. All right, so let's set up the law of sines. Law of sines tells us that sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B, which is equal to sine of C over C. Angle A we know is 50 degrees. Angle B we know is 60 degrees. Side length A is unknown, B is unknown, C is unknown, or I'm sorry, C is known, that's 230 units. Before we start filling in our data, let's go ahead and find our missing angle measure here for angle C. We know that 180 degrees minus 50 is 130. 130 degrees minus 60 is 70 degrees. So therefore, C has to be 70 degrees. Now let's come over here and solve the rest of our calculations. Sine of 50 over A is equal to sine of 60 over B, which is equal to sine of 70 over 230. Now a couple of these calculations can be found, or at least one of them can be found using our unit circle, but these other two, they're not very common to the unit circle, so we won't be able to do those in our head. Instead, we can use our calculator to solve the unknown side lengths. So I know that B would be equal to a cross multiplication of 230 times sine of 60 degrees divided by sine of 70 degrees. A, in a similar fashion, if I had it reorganized, would be set up the same way. 230 times sine of 50 degrees divided by sine of 70 degrees would help me calculate side length A. So let's go to the calculator and find out what those are going to be. In the first case we have 230 times sine of 60 degrees divided by, uh, let's make a fraction out of this, 
control equal. Oops. Let me try that again. I'll jump up to that last entry line. We'll call that down and press control divide to make this a fraction. Sine of 70 degrees is what we want down below. And we'll press enter here. Control enter for a decimal result. It looks like that side length is 211.9691. 211.9691. Nine one units. Similarly, for side length A, all that we need is 230 times sine of 50 divided by sine of 70. So back at our calculator, I recalled the last calculation and I've changed the 60 to a 50. I'll press Control and Enter, and we see that that side length has to be 187.4977. 187.4977. And this gives us enough information to finish the, the triangle. A is equal to 187.4977. B is equal to 211.9691. And we have this triangle solved. Let's take a look at the next example. Angle A is only 30 degrees, so I'm going to draw that a little bit more shallow than before. A is 30 degrees, C is 65 degrees, thirty degrees, sixty-five degrees. B, lowercase b, is a side length of ten. So we don't know what length C is or length A or angle C at this point. Let's solve the triangle. This appears to be another angle side angle triangle because of one two angles with the included side in between. This is also case number one for the law of sines. Now, angle C would be 180 minus 30 minus 65. So I know right away that my drawing is less than accurate because it looks like the angle that I created here was greater than uh, 90 degrees, when in actuality it should have been less than 90 degrees. So this is the problem when sketching these triangles without using a protractor. But we can still calculate the missing sides and angles. So I'm going to mark C in a different color, 85 degrees, because that's something that we calculated. Um, side length B, we know, is 10 units. So let's set up our law of sines. sine of A, which is 30 degrees, over A, is equal to sine of 65 degrees over B, which is 10, which would be equal to sine of 85 degrees over C. In either case, we'll cross multiply and divide to solve for A and C. So in A, we'll multiply 10 times sine of 30, divide that by sine of 65. For C, we'll multiply 10 times sine of 85, and divide that by sine 65. So at our calculator, we need 10 times sine of 30 there we go 10 times sine of 30 with the cursor to the outside we'll press control divide over sine of 65 and that side length comes out to be 5.5169 
And for side length z, we'll repeat the calculation, except we'll use sine of 85 degrees in the numerator. So I'll call that calculation back, erase the 30, and instead call it 85 degrees. And press enter. 10.9918. C is equal to 10.9918 units. So A is 5.5169. C is 10.9918 units, and that triangle is solved. I'd like for you to pause the video, try number 17 on your own, and check your answers in just a moment. And here we go with the result for number 17. We have angle A to be simply calculated to be 100 degrees. We did that by subtraction. Then we use the law of sines to find that angle, or I'm sorry, side length A is 89, and side length C is about 70 units. So this is the work that I used to set up the law of sines. Here's a sketch of my triangle. Now again, you'll notice that my triangle is not sketched very appropriately because this measure of 100 degrees clearly appears to be acute when it ought not to be. C, having a side length of 70, is the middle length side, and A, having a side length of 89, should be much longer than what it is. But as far as a sketch goes, it'll serve its purpose to allow us to, to solve the triangle. We've got six nice solutions here. Let's take a look at how we might use the law of cosines to solve for a missing side length. It's not often that we use the law of cosines to solve a triangle and find all missing sides, uh, because once we, once we solve for one of our missing sides, we can then switch to the law of sines, which goes much quicker. In each of these examples here, we'll just work to solve for the missing side length. Let's first identify what we have. We've got one side, two sides, and an included angle. So this is SAS. This is case number three. So clearly it is a use for law of cosines. Now this side down here would be called side length C. Uh, this side here, 21, is equal to side length B. And the X is the unknown side length A because that's across from the angle measure A. So the form of the law of cosines that I would most likely use here would be a squared equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cosine of a. Let's replace those values and then solve for a. So we have a squared equal to 21 squared plus 42 squared minus 2 times 21 times 42 times cosine 39 degrees. I know that the square root of a squared is a, so therefore a by itself would be the square root of this whole side of the equation. And this is something that I can enter into the calculator. So on the calculator we have uh, the square root of 21 squared plus 42 squared minus 2 times 21 times 42 times cosine of 39 degrees, making sure that our calculator is still set in degrees. Now when we press control enter we see that our result is 28.8810 a is equal to 21.8810 units. Since the diagram was provided for us, you can answer this as A equals or X equals since the original problem was labeled as X, and I'll accept either answer. Let's take a look at this example. We have another example of SAS, which is case number three. One side, two sides, and the angle that connects them, the angle in between. So this 
x value again we can call a um, 8 is b 2 is c so let's use that same setup a squared is equal to uh, b squared and so on in fact I'm just going to write this out uh, directly here a would be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 8 squared that's our um, b squared and c squared although I wrote them out of order let's put them back in order the way they were b squared is 8 squared plus c squared which is 2 squared minus 2 times 8 times 2 times cosine of 88 degrees and with my calculator off screen this time I found the solution to be 8.1782 units All right, now we get to solve the triangle ABC again, and this will be an example of us using the law of cosines, though we won't use the law of cosines the whole time. We'll switch to law of sines halfway through. I know that we have to start with law of cosines because each of these are side lengths. They're all lowercase letters. So we have side, 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 which is an example of case four. This is the first time we've seen that, and case four requires us to use the law of cosines. Since all three sides are given to us, it won't make a difference which letter we solve for. I'll go ahead and use the same form that we've been using so far today. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of a. And it's this a that we're going to try to solve for because we have all three values of lowercase a, b, and c, but it would be nice to have a capital A for an angle measure. So when we replace we have 20 squared equals 25 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 25 times 22 times cosine of A. Next I'd like to isolate A and the first step I might do is move these two pieces to the left hand side. So I'm going to subtract 20 squared minus 25 squared minus 22 squared. I know, and I know that would be equal to the opposite of 2 times 25 times 22 times cosine of A. Uh, you'll notice here that I haven't done any of the math yet. That's because I'd like to wait and do this in one step in the calculator rather than having to jump back and forth. Now the next thing I'll do is remove this piece. I can do that by division since we have this number multiplied by cosine of A. So when I divide both sides I'll be left with 20 squared minus 25 squared minus 22 squared divided by negative 2 times 25 times 22 and that's equal to cosine of A. Now in order to get A by itself, I apply the inverse cosine, or the arc cosine, to both sides of the equation. And ultimately that's going to leave us with A is equal to the arc cosine of 20 squared minus 25 squared minus 22 squared divided by negative 2 times 25 times 22. Now there's nothing wrong with calculating any of these results uh, as you go. For example, you could have found this result and uh, the result of this fraction. In fact, if you did find those results along the way, you'd find yourself calculating the inverse cosine of 709 divided by 1100. But personally, I don't like going to the calculator but more than one time in a math problem. So um, I'm going to calculate this result here, and we'll take a look to see what A should be equal to. And we can verify it with this result down below. And you can see here that I completed the cosine inverse calculation in both ways, uh, with the original math before I simplified and with the math after I simplified, and the result came out to be the same. Capital A, or the angle measure, for A is 49.8684 degrees. 49.8684 degrees, and that's good for both of these solutions.
Now I'm not going to go through the trouble of setting up a new law of cosines just to solve for b or c. Instead I'm going to use this known value from a and the sine, law of sines to find the rest. Because sine of a over a would be equal to sine of b over b, which is equal to sine of c over c. Now sine of a, whoops, a we know to be 49.8684 degrees, and that's divided by side length a, which is 20. Then sine of b over 25, and sine of c over 22. Because of cross multiplication and division, we see that sine of b is equal to 25 times sine of 49.8684 divided by 20. Now if I want to isolate b, then I would apply the sine inverse to both sides of the equation. So what I might do from the beginning is identify that b is equal to the arc sine or sine inverse of this calculation. Therefore, C, in the same fashion, would be equal to the arc sine of 22 times sine of 49.8684 divided by 20. And these are two results that I can get from the calculator. So here we go for our first calculation. We see that we have a result of 72.8834, 72.8834. And if you're really interested in saving time, what you might recognize is that we have two of our three known angle measures. We could subtract those from 180. But I'm going to finish out uh, calculation C since I have, it set it, I have it set up already. All I need to do is repeat this calculation and change this 25 to a 22. And I see 57.2483 is about the result there. Now if I subtract it 180, minus the 72 that we found for that angle, 72.8834, and subtract off the 49.8684 that I got from the first angle, that two is equal to about 57.2482. So just a very, very small rounding difference. 57.2482. Two, four, eight, three is what ours would have looked like had it been rounded. So we now have all of the parts, although our work is very messy. Let's um, record our final answers in a nice, neat response. So I'll, I'll put those here. We're looking for side length and angles, A, B, C. So these are the angles. These are the side lengths. Angle A we found here 49.8684 degrees. Angle B we found here 72.8834 degrees. Angle C 57.2483 degrees. Side length A, B, and C were given to us 20, 25, and 22. I would suggest that you try solving number 20 on your own here. I'll pause the video and complete the solutions myself and you can check your answers as well. And this is all the work that you would need to solve number 20. In this case, with the information that was given, we have two angles and a side that's excluded. So this is AAS, case number one. Case one requires us to use the law of sines. So I built a table here to fill in the information that I would find along the way. 
The angle measure at the beginning was found very quickly by subtracting from 180 degrees. With those three angle measures known, I built my sine table here, so law of sines, and used cross multiplication to solve for B and C. I hope your answers match. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be available tomorrow in class for help.